I'm down here in uh, coastal North Carolina, and one thing that we do have here is bugs. I mean, there's mosquitoes are ridiculous. Uh, the ticks are, are, you know, even more ridiculous than that. Uh, and even up in the Northeast, uh, when I'm up there in the Adirondacks, you know, the mosquitoes are not quite as bad uh, as they are down here, but there's a lot of ticks. And then when you get up in the Adirondacks, especially during, uh, you know, the summer months, you get into black fly season. So, Working with the military for, you know, 24 years now also, I've had a lot of DEET on this skin uh, and even the permethrin, you know, treatment for the clothing and stuff. So a lot of harsh chemicals. So was doing some research uh, and found a recipe for Nesmux uh, bug dope. And this goes back to, I think it was originally published in uh, 1880 and then again in 1883. Uh, so that's as far back as I can trace this recipe uh, for, but, but they called it bug dope back then. Uh, so I thought that I would make some of that and try that out down here in coastal North Carolina for a while and let you know how it works because this is a good, I think, uh, more natural, uh, hopefully safer alternative um, for, uh, for an insect repellent uh, that you can make. Um, so really simple recipe uh, Nesmuk had. Uh, it was um, three parts pine tar, two parts, or two parts castor oil, and one part pennyroyal oil uh, and I think it even broke it down further to where you know you had one ounce two ounces and three ounces and so, so roughly what that comes out to is six tablespoons of pine tar uh, four tablespoons of castor oil and two tablespoons of pennyroyal oil uh, one of the things that I was reading had mentioned that the castor oil they thought that it was actually castor oil from you know uh, beaver castor uh, like the beaver scent glands, and uh, I don't think that's correct. Um, I can't prove that it's not correct because I don't have enough detail uh, in the original uh, information from where I got this recipe, but uh, I'm pretty sure they mean castor oil that's made from the castor bean, uh, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, I guess I'll find out if I'm wrong. I can't imagine smelling like a, uh, you know, smelling like a beaver's scent glands you know, running around the woods. But I think it's probably this one, and I think I've seen other people make it with this. Uh, so, yeah, this is not my recipe by any means. Like I said, this goes back to the 1880s, but, I mean, they had a lot of stuff figured out back then uh, that I don't think we've actually improved on. Uh, I think we may have made things worse with, with some of the chemical stuff. Uh, so I've got a little baby food jar, a little packable size that I can carry this around in, and I'll keep my excess in a mason jar. I'm in a well-ventilated garage. I've got my uh, MSR pocket rocket for the stove uh, and, of course, a double boiler concept here with a mason jar and some boiling water. Uh, so that's how I'm going to get this started. So I'm going to get the, the water heating. I should probably have put this on this side. I'm going to get this water heating, um, and then I'll start measuring out the ingredients. All right, so while that's heating, hopefully it doesn't drown out the, uh, the microphone here, but I'm going to start mixing my ingredients. Uh, and I'll start with the pine tar because that's the largest ingredient in here. Uh, my wife sourced all these ingredients. Um, because I'm going to be putting this on my skin, I could take, uh, you know, a big thing of fat wood and make kind of a, uh, a, um, uh, an extractor for that and extract the pine tar directly from uh, fat wood. I've got it all over the place here. So that's something that I could do in a pinch. That's something I could do, you know, uh, down the road. But, you know, I can't guarantee that if it's not, a, you know, if it's not produced in a double kiln type uh, environment, that it's going to be, uh, you know, creosote, uh, creosote free. Uh, this is certified creosote free. This is what I think is probably better for your skin. Um, but I know they didn't have this back when Nesmuk was making it. He probably used the, the, uh, the more traditional style. Uh, but pine tar is the first ingredient. There we go. Whew. That's pretty uh, smelly stuff in its own right. All right, so double boiler concept. I've got a mason jar floating in here uh, that's surrounded by water. Five, and six. All right, so there's my pine tar.
There's my pine tar. So three parts pine tar. Smelling pretty nice already, I tell you that. Um, castor oil. This stuff is organic castor oil, 100% uh, pure organic. Um, yeah. So I got this from Amazon as well. I should say my wife got it because she sourced it all for me. Uh, so I need four tablespoons of this. And four. Like I was saying before, you know, I'm pretty sure they mean castor oil from the castor bean, not from beaver casters like I had read somewhere. Uh, that would be a lot of beaver. Uh, that'd be a lot of beaver to milk, for lack of a better term. Uh, anyway, then last but not least is uh, I've got 100% pure pennyroyal oil. So it was three ounces of the pine tar, two ounces of the castor oil, one ounce of the pennyroyal. I only have one ounce of pennyroyal here, so uh, but it would be two tablespoons. But essentially, I need this entire thing because this is one. This bottle is one fluid ounce. I'll just take that stopper out. Pretty good stuff. It actually smells like peppermint. It smells really good. Pour that in there. And by Ola. I'm going to turn that heat down a little. But I just want to simmer this for a while. And I don't want to boil all my water off. Keep that dude simmering. It smells pretty good at this point. I think I spilled some of the penny royal into the actual uh, water bath. Um, so it smells really good. So I'm going to let this simmer a while and uh, then we'll come back and take a look at it. It's been boiling for about an hour. Uh, it'd probably take less than that, uh, but I wanted to make sure it had, uh, you know, the oils had enough time to, to mesh, you know, properly. So I, I think I probably could have got away with a half hour for it, um, but I went and took it an hour. Uh, I actually started carving a spoon out of some cedar that Andrew sent me. Uh, started carving a spoon while I was waiting, but uh, basically now at this point, all I've got to do, give it a good stir. You can see the consistency of that, I think. And then I can pour it over into a, you know, a small jar like this. Uh, keep in mind, this is extremely hot right now. Uh, so I'm going to allow that to cool, and then I'll pour it over into like a small jar like this so that I can carry it. But that is Nesmuk's, Nes uh, Nesmuk's recipe. That is Nesmuk's recipe uh, from the 1880s for uh, punky dope, uh, which is a, a DIY uh, do-it-yourself uh, bug juice pretty much, an insect repellent. Uh, three parts, just to review, three parts pine tar, two parts castor oil, one part pennyroyal oil. Um, so roughly uh, three ounces of pine tar, two ounces of castor oil, one ounce of uh, pennyroyal oil. What I did for my recipe was six tablespoons, four tablespoons, and two tablespoons. Going to try this out for a while down here in the, the, the swamps of coastal North Carolina, and hopefully it works well. Uh, and if it does, I'll continue using this rather than, you know, DEET and permethrin. Uh, when I get back up to the Adirondacks, uh, I'd like to try it out on some black flies as well. But uh, hopefully you learned something, and I appreciate you taking your time to watch. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. And uh, look down in the remarks, uh, or not the remarks, the, uh, look down in the description box. Uh, you'll find links to all of our social media and all the other sites where our uh, survival videos can be found. Thanks again.